Welcome to the Iron Self Podcast, where we jump into health, fitness, mindset, and becoming the best version of yourself. Today with your hosts, Mike and Kayla Minion. So this is our segment, This Week in Coaching, and today is April 25th, and we go over sticking points that our clients were experiencing last week to share with you guys some tips, tricks, and overall... How to be freaking awesome. How to make life fabulous. (laughs) So this week we wanted to address fats, uh, kind of the... The bane of a lot of people's existence, fats are one of those calories that add up super fast because they are uh, per gram more than all of the other macronutrients. In regards to calories. So if we think about it, a protein and a carbohydrate are four calories per gram and a fat is nine. So it's more than double the amount of calories per gram. And they add up quickly because so much of our food sources that we like to enjoy or nourish our body with, I'm going to say, tend to be a little bit higher in fat. And fat is usually, it makes it more palatable, uh, more more satiating. Um, And a lot of the times, uh, a lot lot of food will have more sugar and fat into it to make you want to consume more of it. Yeah, 100%. And and again, the big takeaway for most people with fat is just realizing that, that fat does contain more calories per gram than the other two do. So when people are like, well, it didn't feel like I ate that much fat in my diet. Um, the reality is, is every little bit of fat that you have just accumulates that much faster as far as your calorie totals for the week go. So keeping that in mind and, you know, kind of being mindful when we're picking our snacks, when we are picking uh, and choosing the foods that we're going to consume and just trying to steer to more of the kind of healthier whole food fat options. So thinking of like your avocados, your nuts and seeds and things like that are great. Um, and trying to stay away from, unfortunately, I'm going to... Don't hate me for saying this. Bacon. No. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the biggest things that our clients often say is the ha- the fats come up really, really fast. And I don't understand how I'm not hitting my protein or not consuming um, enough <clears throat> carbohydrates when my fats are all of a sudden over. And so like Mike's saying, we want to help with um, lower fat protein sources. So those are going to be leaner proteins, whether that be vegetarian style proteins like beans and lentils that are going to have more fiber in them to help control your blood glucose or blood sugar levels. Um, or we're looking at more things like like chicken breast, uh, turkey breast, fish, uh, seafood in general. They're going to be a little bit on the leaner side and they're not going to be um, so they're not going to help add up in the calories of fat. Now, with that said, there is a lot of benefits to, I'm going to say the dark meat on the chickens and the turkeys because there's a lot of nutrient component that goes into that as well. So fats are not bad. I don't want people to be like, oh my goodness, the fats are bad. I mean, because there were so many years where carbohydrates were considered bad, but they're neither one of them are bad. They just We just want to consume everything in moderation. So Mike's like, like Mike is saying, avocados and uh, nuts and seeds and all of that stuff is wonderful, but anything in excess is not going to be sustainable and not be going to be good for your body. So depending on your goals will depend on how much fat you're going to consume in your diet and going to depend on your fat sources that you are choosing and being very diligent. Maybe one day you have a higher fat protein source and the next day you offset that with a lower fat protein source um, and vice versa because the higher fat protein sources like the ground meats and those kinds of things do tend to be a little bit more economically cheaper to purchase than than the uh, than the chicken breasts and the turkey breasts and those kinds of things. So a beautiful document documentary this weekend yes Eh. documentary there we go um and it it was all about like the how when we spend less on food because we get more of the processed foods you're going to end up spending more eventually in your medical bills yeah Yeah. healthcare (laughs) so fun fact uh just spend a little bit extra on that cleaner uh protein source and it might help you in the long run No, the other thing is getting really familiar with the food sources that you are consuming and what they are made up of. People are like, well, uh, you know, I'm not consuming a lot of fat, but my fats are jumping through the roof. Well, did you consider that the crackers that you might be consuming might have a lot of fats in them? And those often tend to be things like trans fats, which are not good fats for our body. So 
just starting to pay attention to the food sources that you are having and what they are made up of. And like Mike already said too, aiming for whole foods as much as possible because your body, not all calories are created equal. Um, that documentary- a calories I not mean, just a calorie. A calorie is not just a calorie. If you have a chance to check it out, it is Dr. Robert Lustig and you can find it on YouTube and it is the Stanford lecture that he gives. It is phenomenal. I, I think- <laughs> As long as you're a nerd like us, it is great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving okay. on. Number two is getting into our work days. So adapting to changes and stresses and our work schedules. Yeah, so that was a big one that came up for not just one client, but several clients we heard it from last week, where it was like work was hectic, stress was hectic, and there was changes going on in regular life. Like, how do I stay up on my goals? How do I adapt to these changes and build that resistance? resiliency piece. I think one of the biggest thing to look at and take an honest look at um, for most people is how do you deal with stress in your day-to-day -day life? Is stress one of those things where if something big happens, you just kind of, you're crippled by it and you're like, oh God, the world is imploding. I just, I give up, right? Um, or are you somebody that kind of digests that stress well and you're like, okay, well, you know, I can't directly change how this is going to occur, whether it's something at work that's outside of your control or a group of friends, something that's outside of your control, whatever that is. Um, and really being, again, very honest with yourself and realize that you can't change everything. And what, what do you have control over? Well, you have control over your emotions and how you react to things. That's at the end of the day, when it's an outside source, that is what you have control over. You still need to go to work. You still need to put food on the table for your family. hundred percent agree with that. Um, but how we react to situations, especially at work, I mean, I, previous lifetime, I was a firefighter. Pretty hectic, pretty chaotic career, right? Um, and how you choose to move forward from those stressful moments in your, in your day um, is huge, right? So for, for some people, it's breathing and meditation. For other people, it's getting up and going for a walk or getting some movement in. Um, for some people, it's just bottling everything up until they explode. Probably not the healthiest way to do it, but it is how some people do it. So how we adapt to our stressors within our work life is it really reflective on how we deal with stressors in our day-to-day -day life as well. Often what happens and what I see a lot of the time is these stressors, these changes that are taking place at work uh, happen and people are like, oh, all my goals go to the wayside or they push everything off and they're like, well, now is just not the right time. I'm going to be honest. There isn't a right time for your goals. We make time for our goals and we adapt to these stresses. We adapt to these changes as they come up. So if this is the case for you, asking yourself very clearly, what can I do that can stick to my goals? So before we decided to uh, jump on here live, Mike and I were talking about this and we were like, okay, well, you know, if you think about it, Maybe workouts are just too much. There's just not enough time because you're working extended hours right now. But maybe you can really commit to whole foods and nourishing your body. Maybe you can really commit to a de-stressing practice, whether that be some form of breathing practice, tactical breathing, diaphragmatic breathing, nadi shodana, alternate nostril breathing. Um, there's so many different kinds of breathing practices that we could commit to. Maybe it's just a mindful awareness or a body scan. But whatever it is that you can build that resilience where you go into the stress, you come out of the stress, and you teach your body that it's okay to come out of that stress because when we keep those cortisol levels heightened, those stress hormone levels heightened, it makes us come up with, we end up with like adrenal fatigue or we end up not getting a very good sleep. We end up really high cravings. Like there's so many things that go into this and it's kind of like the snowball effect that this one little stressor really began to compound more and more and more and it affected everything else in your life. If you can recognize that this is the stressor, you can stop it and then you can go, what is it that I can control in this moment? What is it that I have control over going forward? So I can't control work. I can't control what's going on in the world. I can't control the events that have taken place today that have created uh, things outside of my, my normal routine. But maybe I can control my thoughts. I can control how I choose to come out of this stress state. I can control what I nourish my body with. And I can control that I'm going to move my body in some way, shape, or form. Maybe it's not my workout. Maybe I go for a walk. Or maybe it's simply doing some stretching because that's going to be my mindfulness practice. But being very clear on what it is that you can control um, 
one of my favorite things is to set up a, a, what I call a fallback plan. So when shit hits the fan, what is your fallback plan? When all else fails. Yeah. yeah and so like, <clears throat> for, I'll give you an example. I have a fallback plan for meals and I have a fallback plan for workouts. So my fallback plan for meals, when shit hits the fan and I forgot to take something out for dinner or I forgot to, you know, have leftovers in the fridge for lunch. I know there's canned meat always in the, in the cupboard or canned beans always in the cupboard. There's either tuna, chicken, or canned beans in there. I know I can eat those. Normally all three. <laughs> and I always have a can of um, split pea and ham soup in there for the for for the kids if I forget to make dinner. The other thing is is that I also know that if all else fails, there's always chicken breast to fall back on. So I know I can take chicken breast directly out of the freezer and throw it directly onto the barbecue or directly into the oven. And I know that I can easily make something, whether that be salad or I can throw in some rice, whatever that might look like, but I can easily throw together something in a pinch. Oh. And so those are my fallback plans for food. Do you have a fallback plan for workouts? Get up and move. <laughs> yeah. If, if you're going to miss you, if you know you can't make your workout for whatever reason that be, whether it's, you know, life gets in the way, you have to work late. When you get home, um, it doesn't have to be your hour long workout that you're used to. It doesn't have to be, you know, it doesn't have to be anything crazy. It, it just has to be general movement. So if you get up and go for, I'm going to call it an aggressive walk. So not just like a regular plodding along, <laughs> taking it easy walk. Like punching people <laughs> as you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't punch people as you walk. No, but, but just like going for a walk at a faster pace than you were used to. Because if you just walk the exact same as you do every single day, your body isn't perceiving it as any more stress than it is normally. So just going at that greater pace. Or if you're like Kayla, you just maybe go and punch people while you walk. <laughs> well, I'm like, what is an aggressive walk? Like, whoa, watch out for me. <laughs> Oh, you're my favorite person. Anyways. <laughs> but um, building resiliency is so important. So one of the, and I love that Kayla touched on like all the different styles of breathing. One of the best ways to build your resiliency just from a, strictly from a breathing standpoint is using diaphragmatic breathing and doing box breathing. Because the reality is a lot of people can't hold their breath. So box breathing for anybody who's watching that doesn't know this is a four, we're just going to use four as a pretty number. Four second inhale, hold for four seconds, four second exhale, and then hold again for four seconds, and then just repeat that. So it's breathe in, four, hold four, breathe out four, hold four, breathe in four, hold four. So it just keeps going like that. But the, the beautiful thing is your body's going to perceive stress, especially if you're not used to this, because you're going to be holding your breath after you exhale. So your body's like, we need oxygen. This is uncomfortable. We shouldn't be doing this. But the reality is you don't need that oxygen right now. Your body can go up to four minutes without taking a breath under extreme circumstances. So knowing that you can go that long without breathing, four seconds, five seconds, all the way up to 10, 15 seconds, it really isn't going to kill you. And knowing that it's not going to affect you on that level and that you can hold your breath, it does create that stress. And then as soon as you get that breath in, that stress goes back away. So Box breathing is one of those beautiful things to really build that resiliency. And if I like to balance my my emotions or balance myself through the day, some naughty should not us, some no alternate nostril breathing for me is a really nice way to calm that energy and recenter. Um, I will share that video at some point. I did make a video on how to do that. If you're ready to make a change in your life, step into the best version of you, check out our Iron Self Transformation Program. Find more info on our website, www.ironbodycoach.com. The other thing is, is that a lot of people don't adapt to change very well. Like we are creatures of habits. We don't like change. And so really starting to build that resiliency piece is really, really important. Do things differently. So if you normally uh, put something away in the same way, maybe you just start like agitating yourself a little bit and just putting it a little differently. Maybe you always put the milk on one side of the fridge and you move it to the other side and it totally throws everybody off. But whatever it is that you can do to start stepping into that little piece of uncomfortable a little bit more, a little bit more, because it's going to teach you to become more resilient to change. And it's like simple things. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. Our brains love learning too. So if you are right-handed and you don't have a time constraint over something, try doing it with your left hand. Just, just playing with that a little bit, switching sides of your brain to see how it feels. Mm -hmm. Okay. The third thing that we wanted to talk about is 
Um, excuses, not doing things that are uncomfortable. And I feel like that this really goes with that adapting to change. Um, but we had a couple clients that were saying, you know, I just keep mm -hmm. making excuses. Workouts feel uncomfortable. The homework items that you're making me dive into feel uncomfortable. Uh, the idea of eating foods that I don't normally eat is uncomfortable. So it's just like, you know, I just keep making excuses why I'm not doing it. And it's not that I don't want to do it. It's just that I don't want to feel uncomfortable yeah so this is something that i preach all the time is learning really how to find that comfort in discomfort so learning how to push yourself outside of your comfort zone and then stay there for a little bit and see how that feels right and yes it's gonna feel uncomfortable because again you're outside of your comfort zone so pushing yourself to that area and then hanging out there right like bask in that uncomfortable <laughs> um but but really it does build that resiliency again so it it's something where your mind is like we're gonna die we can't survive this don't do it and you're like nope we're, we're just gonna hang out here and and we're gonna play here a little bit and just just play with that border right and then staying there as long as you can and then coming back out of it it's it's a beautiful thing you, if you want to start to begin to change yourself uh, on the inside and starting to do that deep hard work that's going to create that lasting external change, uh, this is where the nitty gritty and the uncomfortable stuff has to do. And so a lot of the time in our transformation program, we will push people into trying um, different homework items that maybe push them a little bit outside that comfort zone, to push them to think a little bit deeper, to think a little bit more critically. And sometimes it does feel really uncomfortable and I will be totally honest with you with that. Um, <laughs> it's uncomfortable when we do it too, but, trust me. But the, but the thing is, is that we give you lots of different options on ways to try something that maybe this one way doesn't work for you, but maybe these other ways do. And maybe years from now down the road, this one way you actually does resonate with you. And so we wanna make sure that you are pushing yourself a little bit further because when you dive into those uncomfortable places, yes, we don't want to feel the sadness and the hurt and the um, and the anger or resentment or whatever it is that might come up, those negative emotions specifically, but that's where the critical work is. That is where we do that deep dive into really understanding who we are at our core and sometimes doing a little bit of cognitive therapy in the sense of looking at things from different angles and then beginning to understand why things unfolded in certain ways. I know for myself, I was able to do a lot of forgiveness and a lot of letting go when I started to look at things that have taken place in my life from different angles, from different perspectives. And it was nitty gritty. It was uncomfortable. I did have to go through those, those icky feelings, but bringing that awareness back to my body, where am I feeling this icky feeling in my body? How does it make me feel? Can I describe what that feels like? We always say to our clients that a feeling of anxiety and the feeling of excitement are exactly the same feeling. It's just how you define it. So if that icky feeling and you're saying, oh, this feels like anxiety, I'm feeling this like butterflies in my stomach, whatever that might be, then how can I change this to excitement? How can I bring, like, really begin to build the positive emotion out of this? So that's the big piece here is sometimes we have to go through that uncomfortable. We have to drop a little bit in order to rise, in order to flourish, and in order to totally understand truly who we are and to become uh, very, very confident and comfortable in that person and in that being. Yeah, and again, it doesn't have to come back to like reliving every shitty moment you've ever had in your life no, by any means. No, um, you definitely no. don't need to go back in there, rip the band-aid off and like like we always say, like bleed all over the place. But it's it's acknowledging that, you know, that you've been through some shit and, and again, like Kayla said, how can you change the perspective on it to maybe see it from both sides and maybe switch the way that story plays out in your mind? Because at the end of the day, um, you don't have to go and like apologize or like accept or expect an apology from somebody else or anything like that. Um, at the end of the day, it's you and your mind and becoming comfortable with the way that things are going in your life now maybe means accepting the way things did go in your past because we are an accumulation. Exactly where we are right now is an accumulation of everything that's happened over our life. So you might have been through some shit that, you know, you don't want to revisit and that's totally okay. But going through that made you the person that you are today. So acknowledging the fact that, you know, you might be that much stronger because of the things you've been through and, you know, you build that resiliency throughout your life. So now not dwelling on who we used to be and, you know, playing the victim card or anything like that, but moving forward from that saying, you know, that, that empowered me to become the strong 
amazing person I am right now and, and really running with that. Yeah, we call that post-traumatic growth. How how did that one experience begin to shape and mold me and help me grow into the person that I am? How did it help me step into this this magical person? And how do I keep growing from there? Like Mike already said, acceptance, forgiveness, letting go, all of those things have nothing to do with anybody else in your life. They have everything to do with you and they have everything to do with you taking back your power. And we wouldn't give you guys exercises or things to do, homework items that we would that we wouldn't do ourselves. And I'll be honest, pretty much every single exercise in our in our transformation program we have done not pretty much we've done them no, all we've, we've done <laughs> between them all. the two of us i'm not saying each I don't of think us I, I don't think i did the eulogy i did anyways that, <laughs> but pretty much all of them we one of us has at least done and the idea of that is that we've seen the value in it we know the value from it and so we want to help share that with like to you i guess um because we want to help shape you and transform you and like we said there's no way to get to the there's not one way to get to the an end result so if we can help you create those that understanding of who you are who you want to be where you're going this is going to be what helps you sustain your health fitness wellness long term and i mean i've been listening to so many podcasts lately and they've been talking about chronic disease such as metabolic disease such as fibromyalgia and all of these other things that they maybe didn't have a full explanation as to to, they still don't have a full explanation as to how these uh, these uh, health concerns come to play. And so what they've actually been able to start showing is that through uh, generational trauma, um, tra traumatic childhoods, um, and through chronic stress, anxiety, worry, that a lot of these these physical conditions that people are suffering from come from a psychosomatic standpoint as the as a precursor. And so that's just something to be aware of. When we start dealing with the stuff that's inside of our head, we start being able to find a healthier body overall, a health and a health. I guess general health in general. Is that general, general, general health, health in general. general. I don't. I don't even think that's that was a good term, but it works. <laughs> we understand. You, you guys get it, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so those were our big three from this week. Um, that's where we're going to cap it today because it is a 20 minute already and we don't want to take these things too long. So I hope you guys found some value in today's This Week in Coaching. Um, if you guys ever have questions or concerns that you want to, us to address on the This Week in Coaching, by all means, send them over info at ironbodycoach.com. We are happy to answer them on here as well, um, along with what we are getting from our, our current coaching clients. You guys have an amazing day. Share this with your friends, family, and loved ones. Hopefully you got some benefit from you. We'll see you next week. Bye. Bye, guys.